Okay, my loves. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Tonight, we are talking about, again, the hot topic of the week. As usual, I like to bring you what people just seem to be coming at me the most, uh, come, coming at me with the most. Did I, holy cow, am I going to stumble on my words already? Um, so tonight, we are talking about why you're still single. Hi, Joe. How are you? Joe, write in the comments for me because I put a thread uh, out today on Facebook and I said, tell me why you're still single. And I wanted to get, um, you know, like really people's experience of why they felt they were still single this time. And I'm going to tell you really what triggered this, this conversation for me in the first place. And it's, it, there's a story behind it. So hang tight. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you that story. I'm going to tell you why I really got into this topic this week. But as you're coming on, I want you to pop in the comments if you haven't done that on the Facebook feed today and just tell me why you're still single because I'm really curious. So Joe, you're first. I'm going to be watching out for you, for you to tell me why you're still single. <laughs> and, um, and we're going to wait for some more people to come on. In the meantime, guys, let me show you this lovely sweater that I'm wearing. You might notice. And, and for people who are watching this in June because you're watching the replay, it is December. This is appropriate. But I'm wearing this super cute sweater that looks awful Christmassy that my sister made. And I will probably never wash this in my entire life. Hi, Adam. How are you? <laughs> Uh, so I'm at the collective tonight, guys. People are coming in and out. Uh, as you saw last time, I was like hooking people in, getting them to take part in the conversation. We have a men's yoga class going on upstairs right now that just let out. And so um, might have some people coming through. We shall see. Um, but yeah, it's just hello. Welcome December. Why not wear the festive sweater? that my sister, who unfortunately passed away when I was 21, uh, or when she was 21 and I was 17 and she passed from cystic fibrosis, and she actually painted the design that you see on this super cute, very Christmassy sweater. And I'm gonna wear it in December's every now and then on shower day <laughs> so that I can just wear it for a day and then tuck it away again and take it out every now and then and never ever have to wash it because like I just feel like it still has her essence in it and if, if anybody's had like a loved one that's passed away you know exactly what I'm talking about stuff just gets sort of really personal when it comes to those last few things that you have from them so I just want to welcome everybody here I want to know why you're still single I want to see you in the comments I really want you guys to engage in this conversation tonight. I'm getting deep into why people are single, whether it's willingly or unwillingly, what are their choices, what are the things that are outside of their control, what are the good reasons why people are single, what are the bad reasons why people are single. And again, that bad reason, that's gonna come to that story that I'm gonna get to in a little bit of like why this just exploded for me. And I really wanted to bring this to you because there are some reasons why you're still single that are within your control. So if you were fighting this singleness, if if you're looking for that right person, I really want you to hang in there because I want to help you understand how sometimes you're getting in your own way. And I see we got Matt who says self-employed and can't find a lady who understands self-employment challenges. I love this, Matt. I love that you said that. Um, because what you hear me talk about over and over again, hello, Deborah, good to see you. Deborah, lovely Deborah, just came back from vacation. She sent me the most amazing book selfie, which I'm so appreciative of. Um, and let me put it up on social media, which was super fun because she's wearing a super sexy bikini. But anyways, and my book looks great with her bikini, can I tell you? Um, so Deborah, beautiful, love that you're here. Deborah, tell us why you're still single, love. Um, but coming back on uh, Marianne, hello, Rebecca, hello. So coming back on, on how difficult it is for people who own their own business, and that's the reason why they're still single. And I really relate to this from the woman's perspective, not from the business owner's perspective, although like now I own my own business. But when I met my husband, he was um, literally just starting his own business. So this was 14 years ago. And 
he he went from working 80 hours a week and in the time that we've been together to working 100 hours a week. Now, if he was working 100 hours a week instead of 80 when we first met, probably we would never ever have seen each other because now there is just basically no time for him to socialize. Um, although I have to say, I think he's feeling um, like he's, he's kind of got the foundation, like he's closer to having the foundation that he wants financially. So he actually came to see the wonders of winter in Waterloo Park with me on the weekend, which was a super rare treat to have him come out with me. And, and the people that we hung out with uh, that Saturday night, I was like, y'all don't know how special this is because most people don't meet my husband for the longest, longest time. But it is difficult for men, for generous long-term thinkers to find somebody who can handle what it means to be in a relationship with them because they work such long hours. When you own your own business, it is 80 hours a week, you know, 60 if you're kind of being, you know, if you're, I, I, I don't want to say slacking, like it's just, I, I got to say, hi, Paul, there's some conditioning really with my husband. I got to say he's warped my mind with the amount of hours that he works because recently I was talking to a woman, one of my clients, and she said, you know, I met somebody and we started dating and I'm like, I go into grill mode because I need to to figure out who this person is and if this is the right And I said, okay, so what does he do? She told me his job. I said, how much does he work? And, and she told me his hours and it amounted, like it was four days a week, 12 hour days. And, I, and instantly in my brain, I went, not enough. Cause it was just full time. Like just full time, I was like, that's not enough. That's not, that's somebody who's, who's like just kind of skating by, he's not working enough. And then she goes, and then some weekends, I was like, okay. So over time for me, I really feel that's the kind of man that a woman should be with because this is somebody who is super conscientious. And I really love the hardworking, super conscientious men. Caroline, hello. I see Marianne said hello back. Um, and so, you know, really women need to understand that these kind of men, the ones who have little time to date but are actively seeking a relationship, they are the diamond in the rough because they have a lot of integrity, they have a lot of drive, and they might not have a lot of time to spend with you, but it's because they're looking at where they are physically, and they're like, you know what, I have, I have this strength, I have this youth right now, I have this capability, and I don't wanna waste time, I don't want to put myself to full use, so I'm gonna work as many hours as I can, I'm gonna work as hard as I can, because I know down the road I want to be comfortable, I want to relax when my body can't handle as much as it can. And so they don't want to feel stressed, like they don't have enough money when they need to pull back because they just can't work as hard. So they're putting their all into today. And, and this is the one marshmallow today versus two marshmallows tomorrow. They're not eating their one marshmallow right now. They're saving that one marshmallow so that it becomes two marshmallows, that they have a better future. Generous, long-term thinkers, when you meet somebody who works hard, I want that to click in your mind and go, oh, okay, wait a second. Instead of eliminating, instead of, instead of saying to myself, I'm, not, I, you know, I'm gonna move on from this one because he doesn't have enough time, then rethink that a little bit and say, you know, maybe if I have more time than they do, this gives me an opportunity to fill myself up a little bit more, to be more self-fulfilled, to redefine myself. Like my kids are growing up, they don't take as much, as much of my time, as much as my focus. Maybe now is a good time while he's working so much for me to go, what do I want? Because often when we get in relationships and people lose themselves a lot, right? You've heard that term, I'm in a relationship and I've, I've lost myself because they sort of wrap themselves around the other person, especially if we're women, because we're so nurturing. And, and so they, you know, we have that desire, we kind of have that tendency, 
But again, I, I really want you to redefine what it is that you're looking for because if you do, if you part that curtain, what you're going to see on the other side is a good man, is the kind of person who's like, I want to build a good life for myself so I can share it with somebody special. So, you know, Matt, thank you for being one of the hardworking ones. I, I want you to hang in there. And I want you to, to tell yourself, I'm going to meet a woman who will appreciate how much I work, who's going to understand how much I work. Um, it certainly does come with challenges. Uh, I'd be interested to know what kind of woman you're looking for. What are the qualities? You know, what, 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 what would turn your head when it comes to a woman? That would make me very curious. Um, let's see if we have, oh, we got more comments. Guys, I love you, love you, love you when you just dive right in there. Obviously, I hit, I hit like a, I hit something with you guys, and I really love that. So, and I've been, I've been sort of, you know, poking you today with this topic. So this is really fun. Christina, hello. Um, Caroline says, I'm fearful of giving over control that I have in my life, money, family, relationships with friends, right? So that is, you know, that's a great, great, great point. And you never should give that up. Anybody who wants you to give that up would be a guy. So that would be a selfish short-term thinker, not a man, a generous long-term thinker. Um, so that is a great reason to be single. Fearful though, I'm a little, I'm a little wary of that word fearful. I don't want you to be afraid. I want you to be confident. Mindset is everything, guys. So, you know, I've, I've been doing uh, Instagram uh, every Monday at noon. And, and I have people, you know, just like here, right? You guys pop up with me on Tuesday nights. And I love it. I love you. And on Wednesdays, I have people who pop up at noon on Instagram. And some of them, you know, they come for advice. And then they give me updates from one week to the next. And, and we had a woman a number of weeks ago, and she said, I'm too busy to date. I don't know what to do. Can you give me some advice? And it turns out she has three jobs. She's going to school to become a paramedic. She has two kids. So obviously an extremely busy life. And I said, first of all, you need to redefine how you're stating this. By saying you're too busy to date, you're too busy to find somebody, you're eliminating the right person. What you need to understand is men are generous long-term thinkers, men are very hardworking. So men will understand somebody who has a very full week when it comes to work and school and goals and really looking to just sort of dive into things and putting your all into everything and, and it kind of consumes you because that is the male mindset. And so if instead of saying I'm too busy today, you say I am perfect for a good man because he will understand that I need to put a lot of time into work to achieve my goals, it's going to change things for you because when you switch that mindset from I'm too busy and it's not working for me to I am perfect for somebody who will understand where I'm at, you help the universe start aligning things for you. And the universe is fantastic that way because what you think becomes, what you think is. And so she switched her mindset, and then the next week she said, I met somebody, and we went on some dates, and we had some kisses. And I said, oh, great. And she said, but he wanted to pay for my school. And I said, yeah, I'm with you that that is too early, but let him know that if you are in a committed relationship, you will let him do anything he wants to do for you because that's what a good man is. A good man is generous. And the last thing you want to do is say no to what they put on the table because it makes them feel good to do things for you. So let him know you're saying no to this because it's too much too soon. But if you were in a relationship together, you would let him do anything he wanted to for you. She said, no problem, I'm gonna do that. This last week, she came back on. She said, I told him, he said, that's great, I understand that. And he came over and put up my Christmas lights. So things are going fantastic because she changed her mindset. So change that word fearful, Carolyn, to I'm confident that I will find somebody who will not seek to control my life, my money, my family, my relationships. A good man doesn't want to control you. A good man wants you to be happy. 
And so if you are saying that there's these things that make you happy, make you feel safe, make you feel secure, a good man will say, that's okay. I totally get that. It's all yours. Ah, Annette. Hello, Annette. Um, so Deborah says, uh, it's hard to meet somebody where the attraction chemistry timing is all in sync. Very true. Been told that being strong and independent scares off a lot of men. I think I give off the friend vibe too. So let's touch on that. Raquel, hello. JP Lynn, hello. Um, so it's hard to meet somebody. Attraction chemistry timing is all in sync. So, okay, first of all, attraction chemistry. Guys, I'm going to say this one million times. Please don't look for the spark because the spark is a flash, right? What you want is a slow burn. So you put those little twigs, you put that little bit down, you put the paper, you light the paper, you add the bigger, the bigger, the bigger wood, the bigger twigs, the bigger sticks, right? Until you're putting on logs. And when you're putting on logs now, I mean, you toss a log onto that fire, it's going to light up because what is underneath it, those coals are so, so hot, so hot that that fire is hard to put out that is what you want. You want the slow burn. So not chemistry. You don't need that chemistry right away. You want character. You want somebody who, you know, again, generous long-term thinker, conscientious, responsible, you know, really looking for somebody that they can put their all, they can give their all, and they will feel secure knowing that they're getting so much back in return. Not exactly the same thing they're doing for you because, again, men understand that you want to be puzzle pieces. You each want to contribute your strengths. And so they're looking for somebody who is strong where like maybe he has very little time, but he wants somebody who has a little bit more time so that when he has time, he has companionship, right? So really look for compatibility and look for character and let the chemistry ignite. This would be such a beautiful process for you if you can do that. Just open your mind up and say, when I'm going to go on a first date, when I'm going to meet somebody initially, I'm not going to go there looking to gauge if there's a chemistry, if there's a spark. I'm going to go looking to gauge if there's character and then from there go for consistency. Um, strong, independent. Okay, so I actually just had a conversation right before I started doing this live. Um, one of the ladies here, well, Jen, you guys met her last week. She said, I went on a date with somebody and he said, you know, I am here. I have like, I like to travel. I have my own business. I make good money. I have great friends. And she's like, I'm meeting you right where you are. And he seemed to get turned off and he ghosted her. And I said, that does not sound like a man to me. That sounds like somebody who was insecure and maybe masking their insecurity with all their accomplishments. And when they met somebody who was as accomplished, it, it did not make them feel secure because insecure people don't want equals and they certainly don't want you to be above them. They're looking for people to step on in order to elevate themselves. And that might have been what he was looking for. Um, so yes, if you scare somebody off because you were independent, um, because you were strong, certainly that is not the right one for you. My husband fell in love with me because of my strength and my independence. And let me tell you, there are phases when you're going through a relationship. There's the courtship phase, the insecurity phase, and then the settling in phase. So we, we had the courtship phase, and then I certainly went into an insecurity phase. And he went into, whoa, who is this? Because the woman I fell in love with was not insecure, was not clingy, was not dependent and needy, and it really turned him off. So if he gets turned off because you're strong and independent, that is definitely not a man. This is probably a guy who's a selfish short-term thinker who needs to feel more secure by stepping on top of others. So I'm glad that one didn't work out. Uh, Jennifer says, I don't know how to keep a man pursuing me. They always feel I've lost interest. Um, that is interesting. That's a very interesting uh, note right there. Don't know how to keep a man pursuing me. They always feel like I've lost interest. This is why I do coaching, you guys, because it is so much easier for me to give you the script. And 
can I tell you, I'm fantastic at the script. Let me just give you an example here. I'm going to bring up a, a text message. This is a, a client of mine. And uh, so he's, so I, I got him onto the, um, the dating sites and, you know, picked out his profile picture, helped him with his bio. And I said, okay, go get him, Tiger. And gave him instructions on how to connect with women, which is read their profile and say something to them that relates to what they've written about themselves so that they understand that you're not just looking at pictures, looking for someone sexy to hop in bed with. You are reading profiles because you're looking for a relationship and you're interested in them as human beings and you're looking for somebody you can connect with because you seem compatible. So he wrote me, what kind of message can I send to a woman if there's very little in her online dating profile? And I said, I'd love to learn more about you, smiley face. Your profile is pretty sparse on details, dot, dot, dot. Are you just testing the waters? Or are you tired of schmoes who don't appreciate who you are? So, Chris, Jennifer, sorry, Jennifer, if you are having problems communicating your interest in somebody, I do suggest you get some coaching, um, but really be clear about your interest. Guys, it is okay, ladies, it is okay to state your interest. It is okay to state your appreciation. So let's say, Jennifer, you go on a date with somebody and you had a great date and then you go home, he drops you off or you just, you drive home after your date. Immediately, you send him a text message and you say, hi, I just want to say I had a really great time tonight. I really appreciate it. And then be specific. I appreciated that you picked up the coffee. I really appreciated that you opened the door for me. I appreciated the compliment that you gave me on what I was wearing. I'd love to see you again. This is what keeps their interest going because first of all, people love to be acknowledged. So be sure that you're acknowledging the good in them. They might think you don't notice what's good about them. And when you do, it makes them feel proud about being a good person and having done something well. So when you highlight that, when you let them know what it is about them that, oh, look at this, you guys are loving that. When you let them know what they've done right, people tell themselves, I need to do more of that. And they do that because we seek pleasure, we avoid pain. So if you let them know what they've done right, what should go through their mind is I want to do that again because that acknowledgement made me feel good. So Jennifer, be sure you're acknowledging the good in people, letting them know what you appreciate, and then being clear that you'd love to see them again. This should work for you. So Christina says, I'm very independent and I need someone who invests like I do in a relationship and allow each other to be who they are without trying to control everything learn and grow with each other, but still have our independence. I love this. This is a fantastic point. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking what you need to do, Christina, is make your perfect man list and put everything on there, including the kitchen sink, because there's something buzzing in the back of my mind that says the universe doesn't know exactly what it is that you're looking for. And it doesn't know because you don't know because maybe you haven't clearly defined it. And I may be well off base and I'm probably going to see your, your comment later, you know, as I scroll down saying, no, Chantal, I've already done that. But if you haven't done your perfect man list, I want you to think about everything in your past relationships that you liked, that you want to see again, put it on your list. Everything in your past relationships that you did not like, that you don't want to have in your next relationship, write the opposite, right? So it's a negative I want you to write the opposite. So say somebody snores, don't write doesn't snore, but instead write is a silent sleeper. Um, somebody who you know wasn't courteous, don't say somebody who isn't a dickhead. Instead write somebody who is very polite to everybody. Um, and then I want you to think about what you haven't had in any of your relationships that you wish you could have in a relationship. Put that in there too. Then I want you to write, what would a weekend look like? Do you go to the market? Do you go hiking? Um, uh, what else would you do? Do you just want to sit around and watch movies? 
put that likes to go to the market, likes to go look at antiques, likes to sit and watch movies for hours on end. Uh, are you a foodie, loves great food? Is there a specific kind of exercise that you like to do and you want a gym partner, loves to do CrossFit, loves to go rock climbing? What do you want to do with that partner that goes on your list? I want you to get super, super detailed, put a lot of information on there because every relationship requires compromise. So I want you to be ready, willing, and able to take some of those items off of that list if he doesn't fulfill every single one and put that list up on your fridge so the energy from that list is hitting you on a regular basis and then go about your day, go seek out that partner, let the universe help you and align that person on your path because you've clarified what it is that you're looking for. Uh, Deborah says, I said goodbye to a great guy because he was too busy, only seen him every three to four weeks. Mm, no, 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 no. Um, that's not acceptable. He's recently back in my life asking to try again, but he's still busy. Um, so, <clears throat> so three to four weeks, that's a little much. Like that, there can't be an hour, you know, fit in here and there. And the thing about the courtship period is when people are really sincere about somebody, when they're really in someone, and, and <clears throat> ladies, let me tell you, when a man has his sights set on you, he makes concessions, he makes room, he does the courtship period and he does it right, and then he goes back to his life. So those busy, busy, busy men who have their own businesses, they will carve out time in the beginning because they want to draw you in, that is a goal for them. And then, you know, when they, when they hook you, right, so you can't blame them for hooking you because they want companionship, they're ready, they feather their nest, they're looking for their companion bird, and so they'll take the time, they'll invest the time, right? Because every hour not worked is an hour that they're not making money, but they're literally investing in you by making time for you. And if he's not making time for you, interest isn't as hardcore. And like once a week, once every two weeks for a busy, busy, busy man is not unreasonable. So if it's every three, four weeks, the interest wasn't up there. Um, He's back in your life, he's trying again. Yes, he's still busy because you know he's, he still has, he's still doing what it was that he was doing that was keeping him busy. But let's see, Deborah, if he, if he like puts in more effort, if he carves out more time. You know, that, that time window might shrink again once you start you know, sort of dating in earnest and he really needs to get back to reality, he needs to get back to doing his job and he needs to get back to reinvesting into his long-term future, not just, you know, reinvesting in developing a relationship. Um, but I, I, I'm interested, so keep me posted on that. Uh, Carolyn says, yes, I agree with you. Women need to be independent and strong in order to provide for our kids and keep on going when things get tough. Men are fearful of this because they want to feel needed. Um, so men, you know, listen, we all, we all want to feel needed. We all want to feel like we belong. But men are independent and, and really typically not clingy beyond the courtship phase. Um, bye for our kids. Keep on going. Things get tough. Men are fearful. Of, uh, see, uh, that's, that's more of a guy thing, not a men thing. Um, men certainly understand raising your children. They really understand devoting time. They they understand being conscientious. Men are very forgiving of those, those kinds of situations. I think somebody who's not is a selfish short-term thinker, not a generous long-term thinker, uh, especially men who have children of their own. They would definitely understand that because generous long-term thinkers who have children are very conscientious parents. Um, they, they tend to go above and beyond, so they would relate to somebody who goes above and beyond. Hey, Sherry Ann, good to see you. Um, no, Siri is turning on for me right now. Uh, Christina, so agree. Mindset is everything. Good, Christina. Patty, good to see you, Patty. Hi, lovely. Um, okay, so Christina's done that list. Uh, so what? Why? Maybe it's just maybe the timing isn't right. Uh, Christina, do you feel you're like 100% ready for a relationship? Are you telling the, the universe you're ready for a relationship? Uh, you know, what is your language like when you're talking about that relationship path? Uh, Jenny says hello. Hello, Jenny. Um, 
Let's see. Patty says, I'm going on dates with these men that get, say, two dates in and then turn into a totally different man. It's not a man. That's a guy. Men are very consistent with their character, with their personality. Uh, so, Patty, I want you to send some messages to the universe that you are ready for a man. No more guys. Get the guys out of the way. You got to have your no more moment. Listen, you need to have your no more moment. This moment where you have absolute conviction of what it is that, <clears throat> that you will no longer have. For me, you guys know it was no more assholes. Um, what is it for you? Is, is it no more assholes? Is it no more selfish short-term thinkers? Is it no more guys? Yeah, we got some love on that one. <laughs> uh, Pat is so sex-based, yes. Males are sex-based. Males are definitely mad. Good to see you, Michael. Good to see you. Uh, Christine says, I don't like being around clingy, controlling people. Strong, independent women don't. Uh, Raquel is ready. Raquel is definitely ready. So I'm going to tell you guys that story now of really what sparked this. Um, I was on a, 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 what would you call it, like a messenger board, so a singles messenger board, and I saw a woman posting sort of a complaint of something that had happened recently. So she met a guy, you know, male. I don't know if it's a man or a guy, but she met somebody online. They had a few dates. Now he has kids, she has kids, one of her kids has a medical issue, and it is unpredictable when it will need some time and attention. And so for you know the first, second, and third date that they had together, she was late for her date. So he comes there for the third date, comes to pick her up. She's not ready yet. She says, I'm sorry, I'm not ready yet. Can you, can you wait a few minutes? My son's playing video games. You're welcome to go join him, play some video games with him. So he does. She finishes getting ready. They go on their date, he's off. They finish their date and you know they're texting afterwards and he seems cold. And then she has a conversation with him and she says, are you okay? And he goes, yeah, you know, I'm sorry about that. I just, it kind of, you know, put me off that you've been consistently late for our dates. I feel like it's, it's a disrespect. But, you know, I, I did have like an emotional reaction to it but I, I'm through it, I'm over it, and I'm okay now. And he was, like his tone when he was talking to her about that was, I'm okay. But she comes to this message board and she's relaying the story, you know, and, and also including how he went off, but then he came back. He came back to himself, to the person that she was more familiar with than the off person. And she finishes her story saying, I don't think I want to see him again. <clears throat> and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, wait a second. You're not giving what you want. So what does she want? Well, she wants somebody who's understanding of her situation. She wants somebody who can accept that not everything is going to always go as planned, that there will be ups and there will be downs and there will be moments and, and these moments are caused by humanity. My son is a human being. I can't always predict what's gonna happen with my son. I need to deal with that. I, the human being, needs to address what is happening and it affects my life. These human moments have an effect on my life. But then she's looking at the person across from her having a human reaction, which was disappointment because you know, when we're excited about a day, when we want to spend time with somebody, and, and maybe when we've had a bad day, and guys, you know that you can be in traffic one day and it doesn't bother you, but you can be in traffic on another day, but because something, you know, happened before that, maybe you got in a fight with a loved one, you, you, you're impatient at being stuck in traffic that day. So the same situation from one day to the next doesn't always elicit the same response based on what may have happened before. And by the way, um, men cycle as well too, right? So you know, women, sometimes we feel more emotional about things one day than we do another. Men have the same kind of thing. And so I'm looking at this woman who's writing this and she's talking about how she's not willing to accept somebody having a human moment. And I, I didn't think that was fair. And what popped into my head 
when I saw that was this is probably why you're still single is you're not willing to give what it is that you want so if you want somebody to accept your humanity if you want somebody to accept your ups and downs your unpredictability then you need to be willing to accept the same thing and it sounded to me that she might have given up somebody who was maybe good which is a shame so I want to caution you about being hasty um, saying no to people based on an emotional reaction they had to something that happens in your life um, I want you to make sure that if you're asking for people to accept your humanity that you're also willing to accept their humanity as well so that you know if I'm going to talk about good reasons that people are still single versus bad reasons that people are still single bad reasons being those that um, you, you may want to look at and maybe maybe change a little bit make sure that when it comes to a relationship when it comes to what you want that you are willing to give what it is that you're asking for so if you want concessions if you want acceptance then be sure you're willing to give that um, let's see oh hey Mark Mark good to see you Mark uh, Lisa, Lisa's here too. Hi, you guys. Um, all right, so Matt, Matt is back. I asked Matt what kind of woman he's looking for. So Matt says, looking for a very classy professional woman, best friend. Just ask. Chemistry will make all possible. Yes. So you know this. It's it, it's it's interesting with men because I I kind of think men tend to have love at first sight more than women do and I think it's because uh, men are more prone to first falling for the visual and then discerning the character so as a man it's the character that keeps um, oh, apparently Matt doesn't want pot smokers if you're 420 friendly move on um, so <laughs> And, and I think that men are, it's great that they're designed that way, that they're designed to sort of, you know, go for the visual and then lean in and really sort of dissect the character. Um, and, and I love that Mother Nature made them eager because it balances women. Because again, when you think of the fertility cycle, men are on 24-7. Women, we cycle through our fertility, which gives us really the ability to sort of lean back a little bit and go, okay, you know what, you, you seem cute, but I really want to... I really want to, you know, delve into the layers here and figure out who you are. Um, so here's another reason why you might still be single, and not you necessarily, but maybe someone you know. Uh, you're afraid you'll stay in the wrong relationship for too long, so you don't get into a relationship at all. And so coming back to that fear factor again. Um, and I, I see people do this a lot where it's the once bitten, twice shy, and so they've been in the wrong relationships over and over again, and now they're really, really holding back to getting into the next one and absolutely be discerning. I'm not going to take that away from you, but sometimes we shut down too much and not giving an opportunity for that slow burn, really going on a first date looking for a spark so first date after first date after first date because you're not feeling a spark on those first dates um take down a little bit of those walls and really give people a chance because men do take time to peel back the layers because they're selective with their energy they're more selective with their energy than guys guys want to attract you in with a lot of energy men are like they're looking for the right person to give their energy to so they they do hold it in a little bit more and then they'll divulge themselves a little bit at a time. So be open to a process and use my no kissing for three months rule. That way you eliminate some of the fear. This is your insurance policy. So you're not afraid of getting in the wrong relationship anymore. You just have the conversation instead of the kiss and then you see who stays. This is such a great tactic, guys. I'd love to hear from you if you've tried this yet. I know Mark has and it's worked out for him. Um, and then we have the people who feel like they have a, a negative selection process. So they have difficulty getting in the right relationship 
because, you know, and I'm quoting here, guys say they're ready, then bam, they're gone. And, and, and so obviously who that is, is, you know, listen, it could be a man who figured out, you know, you're not the right one for me. That could very well be. Um, but there's also a chance that it's somebody who says they're ready for a relationship, but then you want to take it slow and then they're gone because it's not going on their timeline. Um, and so you, you just, you're just kind of afraid of your, of your selection process. So again, use the no kissing for three months rule. And, and that's going to, you know, you're going to have a lot of bam, they're gone, but that'll be the self-destructing thinkers, not the generous and long-term thinkers. Um, not meeting relationship material, make your list, let the universe help you. This stuff works. Meditate, calm your mind, put that signal out, really clarify what it is that you're looking for and let the universe help you. And then we have not willing to compromise on habits or space. I want to open your mind just a little bit more because, you know, life can change in wonderful ways with the right person. Some of them you're not going to like so much. Um, you know, some of them will take some, some getting used to. I had to get used to my husband having an ex-wife in the picture. And so that was a big adjustment for me. I've always been in relationships where it, you know, there was no exes, like absolutely no exes at all. And I went from no exes ever in my partner's relationship to being in a relationship with somebody who had an ex on the same street. Uh, and it was, you know, um, what do you call it? Uh, anyways, it was, it was very close. We were literally like four or five houses apart. Um, so opening yourself up to compromise means, yes, there will be some difficulty in the adjustment phase, but you could end up with somebody absolutely freaking fantastic once you get through all those adjustments, once things settle down and you've readjusted to each other. Now, there are very good reasons why you're still single. For those of you who say, because I want to focus on my kids, high five, because a kid's security, I put that above everything else. If, you, if you're a great parent and, and you're balancing their lives, and you're really ensuring that they have all the safety, security, and all the love they need, and you don't want to dilute that, that I'm completely fine with, because the more safe, stable, and secure a child feels, the more safe, stable, and secure an adult they will become, and that is what they will put into their next relationship, and I am all about teaching our kids how to have fantastic relationships, so, if you can raise a conscientious, loving, stable, secure child, by all means do that and then focus in on yourself. I'm totally, totally good with that because you're one of the people that are helping create good people in this world and I would never take that away from you. Um, oh my God, here's a good reason. <laughs> here's a good reason. Amanda, you popped this one up right before I did this live right now and I had to write that one down. Um, Guys can't be consistent, and then they go after my best friend. Yes, honey, no, out of the picture on that one, for sure, for sure. If what you are meeting is people who just don't plug in, they're not the right people, absolutely, and just, you know, bye bye and keep yourself open for the right person. Uh, do make that perfect man list, do meditate, so you're sending that right signal out to the universe and it's helping you out and lining the right person up in your path. All right, okay guys, so I think this is gonna wrap it up for today. Uh, as usual, you know I'm gonna be back here on Tuesday at eight o'clock. You know I'm gonna bring something super fun to talk about. I don't know what it's going to be. It's, it's going to pop up. The universe is going to send me some kind of signal and say, this is what your people need. And I will bring that to you. Uh, keep watching. Obviously keep looking for the notifications. You're going to find out what the topic is and then we can lean in and we can chat about it. I love you. Love the conversation. Love how much you guys were engaging tonight. So much goodness. I will see you soon. And of course, if you have any questions, please send them to me. 
any more comments you want to add to this, please pop them in. I'm reading this stuff all the time, and I love the fact that we are all doing this together. Have a great night, you guys.